as hikers, campers, and backpackers, we all love gear. And that's exactly what I'm talking about today. God, God yes. Good girl. You wanna talk about gear too? Okay. All right, so if you guys haven't seen my last video, uh, I talk about a lot of this gear uh, in a little bit more detail, but today I really wanted to focus on the different options you have as a hiker, camper, and backpacker. So as everyone knows, the kit they carry is very personal, uh, especially for them. So of course, these are the gear options that I enjoy carrying with me, um, and certain situations may call for a little bit different gear to use. So today I wanted to specifically talk about the different options for cooking in the backcountry, for carrying and filtering water, and of course, shelters. So let's get started. All right, so starting off with cooking, of course, if you saw my gear video, uh, generally and by far probably the most popular uh, type of stove or a way to cook in the backcountry um, is your classic canister stove. So what I have here is a BRS 3000T. It's like $15 on Amazon. Uh, made it with, I think this is an eight ounce fuel canister, uh, 110 gram, I think it is, 100 gram, 110 gram. Um, this is, again, by far probably the most popular. It's pretty efficient for what it is. It's a very cheap setup. Uh, however, it can be uh, a little bit heavy. Um, you know, of course, you're carrying this whole fuel canister around with you. You have to carry a large pot or uh, at least a half liter pot if you're cooking mountain house meals. Um, but at the end of the day, very simple to use. Fill it up with water, light it, and you're good to go. A good option for that, uh, and something that I want to use a little bit more, uh, is actually what I have here. This is the Vargo multi-fuel stove. Uh, so it's an alcohol stove. Uh, of course, for that, you need to carry an alcohol bottle with you. Um, it's overall going to be a little bit lighter than your fuel canister. And the big thing here is you can ration out your fuel to where if you know you're only going out for two nights um, or if you're going for a full through hike, you know, you might want to fill this all the way up and you're going to have to constantly refill. Uh, but generally, you know, I have maybe three ounces of water or uh, fuel in here. Looks like water, definitely not water. Uh, that's probably good for maybe four boils. Uh, depends how much you're boiling, of course. Um, but essentially, this is a fuel stove as well as a solid fuel stove, kind of like a uh, like an Esbit cube or something along those lines. So certainly this is gonna be a lot more lightweight um, than your traditional canister stove. However, it will take a little bit longer. It's a little bit less efficient, uh, but again, you can, you can ration out your fuel and bring exactly the amount of fuel that you need, um, as well as an Esbit cube. So that's a, a really cool thing that I got for Christmas this year and I can't wait to try it out on trail a little bit more. And finally, if you're one of those type of hikers who, uh, you know, you're fine with cold food, try cold soaking. Um, I've tried this a few times. I haven't exactly found a recipe that I, uh, you know, I love enough to uh, do this a lot more often. Um, I find this really nice for you when I'm trying to do those really ultralight trips in the summer uh, when it's very hot and at the end of the day I just don't want a hot meal. Um, you know you can you know cold soak some rice, uh, you know rice and beans, different seasonings. You can get mountain house meals that you can just cold soak. Um, a lot of different options here. This is by far the most lightweight out of all of these options that I have here. Um, and it's the fastest as well, especially if you, you know, you filled this up, well, maybe you got a couple of miles to hike left throughout the day. Uh, you can fill it up with water, shake it up a little bit, throw it back in your pack. By the time you get to camp, take it out, give it a good stir, and it's probably already hydrated, uh, ready for you to eat. So this here is probably my favorite uh, three options when it comes to uh, cooking in the backcountry. Next up, we got the different options you have for water storage and filtration. Now again, these are just my items uh, that I'm carrying with me. Don't forget guys, if you like this content, give me a like below and consider subscribing. So generally my favorite uh, water storage slash filtration uh, system, if you will, is the Cadet and Be Free. 
I really like it. It has a really fast flow rate um, and it has the attached one liter bag that I think is pretty good. Uh, it doesn't last overall as long as the Sawyer Squeeze, uh, but generally this is what I'm carrying with me. A good option for that, of course, as I mentioned, is the Sawyer Squeeze. Uh, this is a full size Sawyer. Uh, I like this a lot because it's very modular. Um, you can use it with different water storage uh, options. Of course, it comes with the Sawyer bag. It's gonna have a very small, I think this is 28 millimeter thread um, <clears throat> to where you have to scoop all your water in through this opening. That can be very time consuming, a little bit frustrating. So uh, the number one upgrade for a Sawyer system, if you wanna carry a separate water bag with you, um, is this Canuck Vecto, I think it is, a two liter bag. Um, come in a few different colors. It has a butterfly valve or whatever this is called up here, um, where you know you can slide it, open it up. This is a huge mouth for you to scoop water out of the stream, lake, whatever it is. Um, you can even do a little bit of a pre-filter with this as well, uh, with a bandana to take out some of those larger particles. Um, so your so screw your Sawyer squeeze to the bottom of this guy, um, and then use that to fill up your life water bottles, your Nalgene's, or whatever you're using to carry your water. Uh, the good thing about this is it's also very good for those long water carries. Let's say you have you know, two life waters or two smart water bottles with you. It's an extra two liters of capacity right here. And finally, the most ultralight solution is just to carry one or two life water bottles or smart water bottles. Um, again, the Sawyer Squeeze is really nice because it's modular. You can screw it right to the top of your bottle here, and you technically don't really need to carry any clean water in a specified clean water container. Um, you can just fill up all your containers with dirty water and drink directly from this. So that's a really good ultralight solution. It's very cheap as well. All right, last but not least, Certainly this is the area where there is, I guess, maybe the most specialized gear, especially for uh, something that's gonna fit your personality perfectly. And of course that's backpacking, hiking, and camping shelters. So generally what I like to carry is just a tent. I always use uh, trekking pole tents. I find them very easy to set up. They're very lightweight. They take up little space. Again, this is my Z-Pax Duplex. I picked up for a steal on uh, the Ultralight you know, Gear Trade subreddit, I think is what it is, UL Gear Trade. Check that out, very good tent. Um, really happy with this. The reason I like a tent so much is you just have a lot of room to spread out. You can get a really nice and big sleeping pad. Um, you can sleep pretty comfortably on the ground and there's a lot of room to lay out all your gear, make sure everything stays dry. Um, very little fuss with the tent. What I think is a little bit more comfortable than a tent, of course, is a hammock setup. So this here is a Z-Pax uh, dual-sided stuff sack um, that I keep my hammock in. Uh, it's a hammock I actually made myself from uh, materials from Ripstop by the Roll. Um, it's actually a hand-sewn ceramic. I, uh, <laughs> a hand-sewn ceramic. This is a hand-sewn hammock. Uh, I haven't actually slept in it, but I do hang it up in my backyard and do a lot of lounging uh, throughout the summertime um, in this guy. I don't take my hammock out very often on backpacking trips because I don't have a good insulation system. I've been out on this a few times and I've even been freezing down to like 60 degrees at night, so that's a big chunk of the year. Um, but stay tuned because I am, you know, planning on exploring some make your own gear throughout this year. Um, and one of my first projects will be a hammock under quilt for this guy. Cause I'd like to spend a lot more uh, time sleeping in the back country in my hammock. The natural pair with the hammock is a tarp. Um, this year I had the hammock gear quest 12 foot tarp, I believe it's a still nylon or still poly. I can't remember. I'll throw it down below when I figure it out when I'm editing this video. Um, it's a pretty good budget tent or a budget tarp. Uh, excuse me. It's pretty lightweight. I think this comes in at maybe 19 ounces. Um, overall, a hammock system can be a little bit more heavy um, than a traditional tent system, especially if you have all your gear very dialed in. Um, but there's a lot of places where you can save a lot of weight and the tarp is one of them. And finally, if I'm talking about tarps, that's kind of its own shelter on its own. There are some people who really enjoy sleeping under tarps all year round. 
Um, I've actually done a video on this channel of my first time sleeping in a tarp um, without any other supplemental shelter, just my tarp and my sleeping pad. Um, it was in the winter, around here we get ticks really bad and that's probably the main reason why I don't do a lot of tarp camping. Um, but again, that's something I'd like to try out a little bit more this year with like a pyramid bug net rigged up inside the tarp. Um, or at least maybe just exploring with a lot of permethrin um, and seeing if I can keep the ticks away from me. Alright guys, so those are my main cooking, water storage and filtration, and shelter options that I explore while out in the backcountry. Leave me a comment below. What's your two favorite shelters? Do you explore with different types of cooking while you're out in the backcountry? Are you the type of person who likes to have redundancies? Maybe you carry a Sawyer Squeeze and a Knock, um, or maybe you carry a Sawyer Squeeze as well as a Bee Free. Um, maybe you have the Bee Free and Aqua Mira tabs. Um, leave me a like and a comment below. Uh, describing some of your gear and some of the options that you like depending on the situations. Finally guys, if you like this content, consider subscribing. Stay tuned for the next one.